Okay. So, as you know, I'm shy, so I'm working on that. But we're going to do it per beta, meaning every part of the deal is going to get addressed today because some folks want to put me in a cross and other folks are at a certain level and they want to move on. But the big deal is, you guys, I never shut up all day. So you got to say, hey, Pat, you got a question. I mean, don't, don't feel bad about stopping me and asking. Some of you guys ought to know how that works. But what I want to show you first, you guys get behind me on the other side of these logs because the folks that are roosting need to be able to see too. And same with you guys. If you got a question, just say, hey. Because I'm sure somebody else wanted to ask you. Now, the reason I'm in a halter is because the, the, the fact is to, 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 to make a bridal horse, and what I call a bridal horse is a spade bed horse, is the end of the story. Okay, putting your bridle on your head, the, the half breed is one of the options because not all horses take spades. It doesn't work. It's the way they're made. If I start my horse, Chinaco, if anybody's ever seen him in any of my videos, he's the one that we're taking from birth to the bridle. All the way. And then Deb's going to cut all that video up and turn it into a documentary because it's never in the history of the spade bit horse been done. That's going to be her retirement because you look at me and tell us she'll be gone at three foot. <laughs> so what I do when I start Chinaco, like all colts that I've made seven, I made seven spade bit horses in my career. I've been at it 50 some years. So if you're scared of a timeline, then go do a performance. Okay. Before you can put the bosal on. And the myth about the bosal, there's all kinds of misconceptions and things that are wrong. So the easiest way to show you is that I have to have the one range stop. Front feet don't bleed. Horse crosses its hind feet. All right, I teach him that in the round pit. On the third ride, I'm outside on almost all horses. So I have to have this in a halter. I'm going to tell you why I do it in a halter. is because everything you're about to see, if I use my 5 8 for solve, I would ruin the feel. I get him go right off the bat. And what you'll see, you guys, is that the muscle that actually triggers the hackamore isn't being touched by the halter. That's why... Don't use the bosal. This replaces the three quarter bosal. We've learned over the years that we have evolved. It's like the Model T versus the car. It's, we have evolved. So you got to have the one way to stop. And the other thing that's different is I got to have a stop and a backup in the halter. Now this is all done outside, mind you. So the backup. You guys know this horse is broke, but what I'm telling you is, is that I teach a horse to walk backwards from where she at. You never, ever pull with two hands on a hackamore. The snaffle bit is a two-handed bit. The hackamore is one at a time. Okay. So when I can walk forward, this never takes more than 10 trips. And I do what I'm supposed to do. The horse walks backwards on its own. Okay, this horse, as you know, is already trained. But I'm telling you, and on a colt, when you teach him to do this, you start in collection, and you're teaching him how to ride off your seat. There is there is no running. This is all done in a walk. So from cold jawed banks in the East Coast that were called three-day eventers or dressage horses, all the way down to any other horse, it's never been more than 10 trips back and forth. You always go to the exact same spot you started, and then the horse starts to figure out it's a habit. See that? It's not cheating. <clears throat> it's setting you up to win. So that's the second thing. I'm going to go out here, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to stop right here. And what I'm about to do is from the viejo. Whenever I say viejo, it's from the old timers. <clears throat> to teach the stop, this was done in the morning when they rode out. Switch sides. So if you notice, the hind feet stick in the ground. 
Okay, so what I've done is counter to collection. But it doesn't matter. Collection comes later. But if you can get a cold to stop, and then, now watch, when I raise my hand, they, you pump them hard. Okay, so you exhale, sit down, and raise your hand, the horse starts to stop. So that's the second thing that has to be taken care of. Okay, the third thing. When I have those three things, then I put on the hat. Because all those one day stops, because you've all rode colts enough to know that you're just yard road and yard road. And you got a horse that says hell with you, then you got to really do it, a lot of them. And don't do it in a bus off. Do it in a hallway. Okay, so there's the word tradition. Tradition is very misused because there's the diehard that has to do it traditionally, but he's not driving a Model T. That's how I think. Okay. Tradition means if you go to a traditional state dead horse, that means you're going to be roping cattle that are five years old and have horns longer than I can reach, and you're able to go out and catch a grizzly bear and bring it back to the ranch alive. I've never done either one of those. Okay, so that's your traditional spade bed horse. And I'm going to put that one on us, but the, we got so much to cover with this subject. What I've done in my career is that I try to emulate the early day mission horses, the ones that broke the grizzlies. And I know I'm not going to rope the grizzly, but I want them that handy so that they can jump sideways or move. And then when I go work cattle, this genetics in my horse, and being started the way I start them back to the mission days, then they're handy enough to where I don't have to. I'm sure you heard the boss say, you stay on your horse, dress you, go get a stick and hold the gate. I don't want to do that. So I try really hard to get my horses handy. Okay, I've got a Lusitano Andalusian on purpose because that's the kind of horse that came over with the conquistadores. That's why I ride that horse because it goes back to the days of the mission. Okay, the quarter horse came in 1949. That's why the spoon is bent on the state bit. We're going to talk about that when we have smoker. We're going to talk about the different bridles. So when you watch a bridle horse and you're making a bridle horse, you really need to pay attention what area you're going to pick. In California, there was no spade bit tradition in Mexico. There was no spade bit tradition in Spain. The original people that brought it over were the Moors. And then it disappeared, and then it came back in California. Simply because in California, the natives, who they turned into slaves and killed them all, weren't warlike. Other parts of the country, they had to fight Indians and catch wild cattle. These bridal horses were made with mission cattle, which were already domesticated, so to speak. And the slaves did all the work, so the guys that were the sons of the dons, they had nothing but time on their hands to make bridal. It's a California discipline. That's, it's not a Mexican discipline. So that's how this all goes about. It all changed the day of the gold rush. Because now the farmer kids in the Midwest and the Dakotas, somebody can relate to that, they took the workhorse, they cut the blinders off, you know, on the harness. They cut the lines and got on old Dobbin and they rode to California to get rich. So the guys that I call the viejos, which means the old timers like me, they watched this parade of white people coming with these pitiful scaffolds and they rode away. And they basically ended up in Nevada. And that's why you always think the Buckaroos in the Great Basin. It started in California and ended up in Nevada. That's why it's longer there because that country didn't populate and California did. Learn it. Now, like I said, any questions at all? Go ahead. Now, what I'm going to do is... Uh, Everything else is part in the hackle. Now, 98% of all collection happens in the hackle. The final thing is the bit, and that has the horse carrying balance. So, Gwen Turnbull said it best. She said it's like a ballerina with a book on her head. She's already a ballerina, but now she has to carry a book. That's what happens when you put the stage in the finish of the so if your horse isn't 99% done when you hang the spade on or you put the reins on, you miss something. It's all done in the bosal. Okay, the word bosal is the rawhide piece around the nerves. Hackamore is the whole thing. Headstall, reins, everything. 
Now, just to break the myth, there is no such thing as Romal, is there? Romal is singular. That's the name of the rain you pick up. The Romal rain has a piece hanging down. That's actually the Romal. The Mexicans separated it and turned it into a quirk. The most guys that ride hackamores have a quirk hanging on the roof, and they can just swing it like this and let it touch the horse. So that's that's what happened. And when you got a ride horse, the Romal is connected to the horse. And you never, ever, ever ride a Romal rain with two hands. You don't ride a half breed horse in a Romal rain with two hands. They're not designed that way. If you do, it means that you skip the big part and you think you're special. And it's wrong. It's not good. All right. What we have here is a freezing cross. What happened, you guys, as you can imagine, after the Andalusian horses were here, and then the real truth about the Spanish Mustang, which is a myth, came about. All these other horses got injected into the bloodlines of the California horses. In 1826, the richest man in Los Angeles imported a thoroughbred mare from Australia because the whole thing was match races. Well, that mare, he didn't shoot her after the race. He bred her. Get it? So these bloodlines started changing. It's a freezing cross. All right. You have taken off the curb strap because you're riding off the... What's up? Yeah? All right. Come up here. Okay. Now, I don't know if you did it because that's what I did or, or you figured it out. All right. What's the mouthpiece on it? It's half read, right? It's not a spade. Uh, it's got a cricket in it. Yeah. But it doesn't have a spoon. No. Okay. That's a spade. Would you get that, Jim? Any spade, just bring it over. <laughs> Any spade will do. You got to go through this thing to check in the plane. So if you got to look, you know yourself. I need to show you how this works. Okay, so this is not a spade mouthpiece. When you put the curve strap in the rings right here, and you pull back, the curve strap tightens, and that's what actually stops the horse. That's a half breed bit, a western bit. That's how western bits work. Not a spade. Okay. The bosalito, which is what he has, means small bosal, and it's a smaller diameter because he's worked his way through the bigger diameters. So, here's how you find out where you are. You're about to find out. If you guys would back up 10 steps for you to some kind of dignity and watching the collection of your horse, <laughs> you're back there up. Now, I mentioned coming in. If you seriously want to learn something, you need to come in now. Come over here. We're going to put the rest of the stuff in the wall. This is not the driver's car. It's all it is, right? <laughs> Everybody get behind me. Now you're starting to understand what level you're at with a horse. <clears throat> this horse doesn't want to cross over the log. Right. Now uh, you took the you took the part off because it just didn't weigh. Yep. Okay. So this is irrelevant because there's no curve strap. If he was to pull on it. He would, he would turn, turn the mouthpiece mouth over, mm -hmm. which jacks the mouth over. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do this, you can't do that. But what you can do is run your saddle string through here, the other side, tie a square on, and leave it alone. Because that is nothing to do with your ride. Yeah. You understand you don't have a person. Okay, see where this is laying right here? Right, right here, here is the muscle that's as soft as the edge of your hand that tells, tells you about the it. Right. When it rubs this muscle, that's what the cue is for the horse to ride. 
Okay, this whole is a little bit too wide. I'm going to squeeze it with my fingers. There, now see it? Now watch. See it rubbing on the hair? Yeah. Can you guys see that? All right, that's the way they work. If it's like this, and it, and it goes all the way to here, it's not, it's not placed correctly. So, as you can appreciate now, 10 minutes in, it doesn't bother me if you want to leave. It's just like watching a curtain. All right, now you're going to side pass. So, what you got to watch, if this horse is ready to move on, his hands should not move. He's going to be riding two hands, both on each All right, now to start off, he dropped that as I said. Because if you hold that, and you move this hand, you're going to take that one with it. That's why you can't have this. Unless you've got a really big bubble in there. Now you're independent. So what happens in reality is he's going to close his hand from the rain, and he's going to sit up, look to his left, and side pass. There's, listen, there's two things. Three things, three rules. Your hands can't move, your feet can't stop, and you can't touch them all. Goodbye. <laughs> halfway down. No pressure. Now he's clearing his teeth because he had a pie on the Chicken. Very accurate with his feet. Now watch, watch how high the basalt is going. All right, now stop, please. Walk the rear end through the hole. Get back on the log. And then the side pass our way. Okay. What, what you, you got, got now stop. stop. What, what you got, got is the basalt doesn't fit correctly. It's too loose. What, what you're losing is that time of the field. You think it's tight, there's the field right there. The good news is he's done a really good job on this horse. It's mechanical. So this needs to be half inch again and closed. And then when you touch that skin, the horse will drive up. Yep. Okay? Yep. So that's what you need to change. Yeah. Make it, make it smaller across. This is a big bit. If you look through the rings, you'll see what the angle of the spoon is. This is where it gets confusing because they say, which one do I get? Well, I need to see the horse. But the thing is, you got to know that the throat latch distance around here is typically what dictates the angle of the spoon. And the genetics of the quarter horse typically has a bigger throat latch than a thoroughbred. So a thoroughbred will drive a lot straighter up and down. That's how it works. But what you're doing this bit isn't heavy enough for the horse to be effective to balance it. The way a bit is supposed to hang is like a pendulum. And it's just supposed to be straight up and down. You can go like that with a swing. That's where you're headed when you make it right. This isn't a spade of horse. This is a bit. But it could be. You think you've got things going. You can make it. Now, you folks, look at this bit. And look at this horse. Okay. This is on the tongue. I'm going to turn him around. So when you pick up on this, when the bit turns, that leaves the tongue. That's how a spade bit works. That's how subtle it is. If you come all the way to a tight curve strap, you're not there. So you got to know in your heart that when that does that, you got them. Remember, a snaffle you can pull even, a hackamore you never pull even, you bump. So this horse, as it backs up, either has been trained and or is anemic, and the head goes down. So you're going to put your hand straight out, mm -hmm. and you're going to bump straight I'm up. Still in your chair. Now back. Bump, bump. There, keep bumping. Bump harder. Straight up. There, that's a bridled up horse. See the difference? That's how long it took. You can go home now. <laughs> but the point is, it's about your hand position 
And most horses in the horse show world, you know, they bump them and they make them put their head on the ground. So we have to get real radical if they've been taught that way because they'll put their head on the ground. Okay, it's all a communist plot. None of it's any good. All right, so walk back up here, please, one more time. Now, here's something that nobody has... Anyway, this is what you have a problem with. <coughs> when you ask this horse to walk backwards, you're going to have your hands up and you'll solve all your problems. You do not ride that way until you see me again. This is temporary. Yeah. I made the mistake that somebody, oh, 10 years yeah. later, and they're riding around like this. The key to you, my dear, is to hold your hands up, have no bend in your elbow, and exhale, because you hold your breath every time you move your horse. Okay. You know what that means to a horse? Yeah means fight or flight. If you exhale, you're telling them, this ain't a fight, partner. <sighs> so as you exhale, like, yeah. you put a dish in your <laughs> spine, get your hands up here, and then don't bump them this time. Go ahead and do it. Hands straight up. There, thank you. Don't bump. Higher. And watch the nose. There it is. Now drop the rein. Drop it. Let go. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Well, Thank you. Although you make it down and Set it down. And I'll tell you when to pick it up. Watch the ears, you guys. This horse is, is changing its mind. It's, it's not listening to her because it's off. It's cocked out. Now, just hang on a second. Now, reach for the ring. The time it takes for that ear to come back is how dull your horse is. So the reality is on a colt, as you reach, you've just moved your entire skeleton and the ear comes back. That's how dead this horse is. All right? This is a habit. Don't even try to train it. It'll go away. But please remember that when you're not doing anything, set the ring down. Now, in this, the way I see it, it's the exact same as putting hobbles on. When I set the ring down, the horse goes, I'm done. I don't have to move, I don't have to think, I don't have to When I put the hobbles on, the horse goes, I'm out, I'm done. If you got good dogs and you say lie down, they're like, cool, I'm out. Even if you got cattle running all over the place, they know it's over. So hobbles and that are what work on a horse's brain. Isn't it? Now, ask me a question about your journey. What do you want to? Um, I would like to try and get to a horse. Okay. All right, your horse is going to be a, how old is it? Okay, it's going to be a half-breed horse. All right, now folks, you see how small the head is. And you see the throat latch here, it's got a clean throat latch. This is the vertebrae that isn't working because of the arc that you need. That's the part of the horse that needs to be fixed. To fix that, you've got to change this top line to make these muscles stronger so the horse will carry the bit. That's why the bit is so heavy. So you need a heavy bit, two pounds at least, so it will carry it. All right, so we're taking bridle at the end of the story. All right, which means you'll ride one-handed. All right, put your horse back. And drop the rein. Now, do you roll? Yes. Okay, you're going to die. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's It's just a matter of time anyway. What the hell? <laughs> I don't care how cool it is. You never, ever put this around the horn. Okay. okay, because when you dally that Makate and that horn, and I've watched it, it's like reeling in a fish. The Makate goes around the horn and the horse flips over backwards. Get your horse back. So you only got 970 to go, get it? Yeah. That's how you make a horse. And to solve the problem on the Makates, you put the rope right through the very underneath your puppet instead of on the side. And it'll lay against the neck. And that's where everybody gets sick of it. It's always hanging down in the way. Here's the problem. Can you lose? Yep. Come up here, you guys, because this is the most important thing I'm going to show you. Do you guys see okay? All right, now, picture this as being a spade bit. Let me have it. That's fine. That's all right. It's old. <laughs> all right. And here's the, if you draw a straight line, which this is not a straight line, it's a Nevada two, get it? If you come a straight line from the hanger, straight down, that's the math you work with, not the end of the cheek. Cannot go past 30 degrees. 
if it goes past 30 degrees, what you've done is you turn the spoon and push it on the pallet, which is on top of the mountain. That's why you can't go past 30. Okay, so pick back that horse up. He's right on the edge. And it's not like you're going to you know, need to call a vet. It's just simply that's, that you've lost the mechanics. So you'll need to tighten that up. And the correct distance is one finger diagonally between the jaw and the curb strap. Okay? Everybody sees the change, right? Okay. When the chains move, that's a pre-signal. That's okay. When I put the pressure on, he needs to raise his head about an inch and bridle up. All right, what you're heading for is to get your hand higher, and when you pick up this rein, he has to shift to the hind quarter. His feet don't move. It's a very simple thing because a spade bit horse, no matter what you read or hear, is a ranch horse. It's not a show horse, it's a ranch horse, used on ranches, working cattle, period. There is no national finals, no champion, nothing. If you're asked to stay on your horse the day you're shipping, you just won the world. That's all you gotta know. Okay, so the horse, now it should change that, right? So you have to be able to shift the weight without the people. That's where you're headed. Okay, there, higher, good. You so got Pat, quicker contact. Pat, the hand goes back or up? Depends on where your horse's head is. Okay. If your hand goes back, that means that you've taken your body back. Yeah. If your horse's pole isn't where you want it, you can bump it. Yeah, see, and like all you guys, you come over the work. It's just that I'm here to put in the pieces. Yeah. Now, once again, he's got the harness leather head skull, so it slows down the pendulum. The hanger is on somebody. Right there, that. Yeah, right there. Let me show you the difference here. All right, this is a spoon handle. Now it's a pendulum. It turns steel against steel. There's no width. So that means you can turn that easier. There's drag on this leather. Okay, this is getting pretty micro, but it's a fact. That's why we put the, the spoons on them. This happened in the cow camps. The guys would cut the handles off the spoon and then make rattle hangers. You can't you find a good spoon. Camp, you find a little spoon. <laughs> like that. Especially the real pretty patterns. And a leaky spoon is called a fork. Who knew? <laughs> anyway, that's, that's something you want to start. Bernadette so that thinks that's that funny. That's uh, cool to them. Because it makes sense. All right, now. Thanks for being our The reason he's got the reins tied together is because the chains flop too much. Correct? That's because of his pitiful snaps that, that you don't use. It's a felony. It's because a felony. In the cowboy world, I would suddenly ride by and I just have the reins to keep riding. <laughs> you would not. <laughs> it's not really fair. All right, let's get the <laughs> Now, back your horse up. I got to see this horse, was it two or three years ago? Correct. And he would absolutely lose his mind. In other words, he just, not buck, he just get all bothered. So himself has done a good job on this horse. So for you, when you get rid of the snaps, and you get some remodel reins with some weight to them, the chains probably won't swing. And if they do swing, then you need to take four of the links out. They're too long. But all this weight right here is what's making them swing. So, um, now I need you to ride to the end and side past this leg. Now what you want to watch is his left hand. When you hang the bridle on the horse, your hand isn't supposed to move. Is this working for you guys? No you pressure. A you, Sorry? you want a sandwich or something you guys are having? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now stop, back up, 
Whenever you get on the logs, you always step over the log. Don't try to side pass onto a log. You're 50% done. Unless you're showing off. All right, now, your left hand should not move. Your right seat bone should side pass. Your right calf should side pass. Your head is turned the direction you're going. Your horse should not touch a log. The feet should not stop. And if the front and hind feet are crossing, you want it. If the back legs do this, you in fact do not have your horse done. Go. Okay, he's using his spur. Yeah, what he's been doing, I'll get the side pass going, but then he loses his squareness. It's like the front goes quicker than the back end, so I'm trying to catch it up. Okay. All right, so now do me a favor. You guys ever see the tour guide at Chernobyl? <laughs> yeah. Okay, doesn't matter. Now, this time, I don't want you to use your spurs. All right, you have a straight line. Where's the English at? Between your ear and your ankle, correct? Okay, if you have that straight line, don't use your spur and simply move your right leg back and see if you can straighten the horse out. Is it the front end stopping or the back end going crooked? Do you know? I Chicken think, and the egg thing? I think the front end is just going quicker. Okay. And then we slowly then, off then the when spear. you start, move your leg back. Try to do it without the spur. You guys, the spur is a tool that needs to be just worn, not used. Slide your leg back towards the back cinch. Your entire leg. There, you just did it. Now, if you can see it, you guys, one of the reasons why I wanted to slide his leg back is because if he does use the spur, he's going to kick the back cinch. It's a dead cow. It has nothing to do with the horse. But for him to break his habit of the spur, I'll let him kick the back cinch instead of the horse. Now, this is your chance to be famous. I want you to sit up as best you possibly can, look that direction, and drop your left seat bone, and do not move your leg. Get your horse in collection. Don't move your leg. Okay, now stop. You see how your horse can do it anyway? You're doing more than you have to. Almost everybody does that ride horses. You've done a really good job. Because I know this horse. I remember. So now I want you to pick up your horse again and move your left leg back four inches. Your left leg. Pick up your rein. There. You feel that? Okay. The point is, you guys, is that horses are sensitive and people are not. It's better than you think. So allow it. You know, be happy for it. You put in the hours, man. And what I'm getting at is that you work hard, and then you get stuck thinking you got to do the same thing every time. You don't. You got to keep that lighter and lighter. Your horse is a good horse.